Hi everyone and welcome. This is Lavender Sky Panther. Today is Monday, February 7th, 2022, and the topic for the day is ultra cringy, and it is called Craft in Disguise. Yes, you heard me right. It's show number 146. It's a collection of images and sky observations happening January 27th, 2021 through February 6th, 2022. And I also have an alternate cover slide here since we are looking at the theme of crafts in disguise and the skies that we've been seeing a lot lately. Um, see which one you like the best. Now for the starter image, it's combined with the greetings from around the world page. And I'd like to say good day, Osio, how? Buongiorno, guten tag, kia ora, jambo, kedu, buenos dias, bonjour, ni hao, cien dobre, konnichiwa, dobro honya, anyo aseo, botaji, dobri den. Aloha, Winala, Kalimera, Hudendag, and good day. Now, this is a glorious red hibiscus flower growing on a, a hibiscus tree. And um, I was also captivated by the backlit color coming in through this green. Now, the basic meaning, and I do invite you to dig around and look on your own for the meanings of the red hibiscus. Um, a great place to start is looking at flower language or search, you know, under like a Victorian meanings of flowers. They were exchanged, flowers were given based on, you know, some of their symbolisms and meanings. Um, and also, of course, there's spiritual aspects and meanings of the red hibiscus. Um, and they can be made into an, an extraordinary tea. And I do cover, actually, step-by-step -step instructions for making your own hibiscus tea if you happen to have hibiscus hibiscus plant, tree, or bush. Um, and that appears in one of my very earliest shows. But in this case, I just wanted to capture... Um, you know, and, and actually honor and celebrate this gorgeous flower. One of the basic meanings is, you know, the feminine or divine feminine. Um, also, the red color denotes passion and love. So it's a popular flower for for this time of the year and celebrating, especially in the United States, the day of love, I'll say, because I don't support saints and all that stuff. Um, but on February 14th. <laughs> um, what's nice about this, too, is green. It's a powerful color, you know, of the, sh the heart chakra. Also, you know, some of these kind of fade into pink ranges, magenta down here. So pink and green for the heart chakra, it's all very appropriate to celebrate love. Um, and also what I found interesting is I'm only noticing now this, you know, glorious bud that's yet to bloom. So it's just a beautiful picturesque scene. And um, that's all I'm going to cover on this for now. I do invite you to do some digging and find some interesting meanings and etymologies and everything on this flower uh, on your own. And so now we're going to go into a little more detail. I have the hibiscus flower picture that I took, you know, resurfacing here just to tie in the overall message because we are looking at the feminine and the divine feminine and all that good stuff. So I am going to just straight out read some of this uh, that I've typed out to the right. And then I'll go ahead and just kind of touch on some more things about the symbolisms and meanings in this, you know, visual in this card, just according on, on uh, you know, to how I am interpreting it. Of course, you may find other extraordinary and, and fun meanings in there as well. Uh, hold on one second, though, please. Okay, I'm back. So a hibiscus and dragon power with the number 11. So I was just going to cover some meanings about the hibiscus, maybe even bring back the detailed information about how to make a tea from my earlier show here and kind of revive it a bit. But that just didn't kind of sit right. So something said, yeah, go ahead and draw a card. Let me tell you, I was pretty shocked when this came up. So um, first off, before I start reading everything, the dragon here, um, I want to be clear for some who may have been You've been kind of searching into different galactic star beings and races and you're learning about that um, or you, you know you've already been looking at that you know you may know about the whole alpha draco or the draconians who you know carry an extremely negative uh, uh let's say reputation and and not without reason um, but do keep in mind with any star being or even human-based race we all know that there are positives and there are negatives. There's the really good ones, benevolent of anything. And then there's, of course, the, the, the rotten apples in the bunch, so to speak, right, that spoil things in the good name of the good. Um, that occurs with everything. Now, in this case, we're going to be talking about more of the ancient dragon or the guardian dragon, dragons that, you know, are more concerned about balance, you know, or benevolence. 
um, not the opposite. And the ancient dragons, keep in mind, can be the size of planets, of galaxies. There, there's so much yet to discover um, as all of us here are starting to awaken and remembering our inner light, inner powers, um, inner expansiveness, and inner um, limitlessness. So when we come to this card, it's not an evil dragon. I know to some you look and you see horns and you freak out. <laughs> it's okay, but that's not this kind of dragon, okay? And if anything, when you see the horns too, you know, we're looking at like that echoes the number 11, which uh, can also denote a pathway to something greater um, or pathway to something, depending on what other number pops up next to it, usually. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read verbatim here if you want to follow along or if you're moving about, you know, you can just use this time to not worry about looking at a screen and, and go do what you're going to do if you're just hearing this as audio. So um, I just want to talk about hibiscus first as being just some buzzwords and little phrases that came to my mind are that it's a, it can represent a balance of gentle power and bold power, divine feminine power and divine intuition, the embodiment of love, strength, elegance, upholding truth, ancient wisdom, creative force, healing ability, loving, passion, warmth. And now when we say divine feminine, all of us human beings here have the divine feminine and divine masculine within us in an imbalanced way, if we want to be balanced and achieve kind of more of a mastery, spiritual mastery. So when you get to the point of the knowing that yes, we have biological reasons why we're feminine and, and masculine in a 3D earth way, but once you are, you know, getting more expansive minded toward the 5D, you realize, yes, there's, there's more to it than that. You can honor that you have these features as the embodiment, like the physical 3D vessel, the body. But the consciousness knows that it is light, you know, as the infant um, awakens, the baby is born on this planet. It's a spark of light. You see it coming in even on the sonogram. So where does that spark come from? You know, that's the divine. That's from a different dimension, if you will. And so that is what our, we are. That is our essence. And you can't put a feminine or a masculine to a beautiful glowing orb of light. You know, I've got the orb here. Uh, or even a star, that spark. You know, you can even look at it as a star, you know, being born, literally. And so... Um, when we look at it that way, there is no, you know, feminine, masculine. Now, I know in some languages, when we look at language, you know, in English, it's just the, the light. So it's nothing, you know, one way or the other. But in different languages, like the, the Latin-based or uh, certain Romance ones, so if you look at light in Spanish, it's la luz, you know, giving it the feminine. Well, in reality, light is light in the spiritual sense, and there's no point giving it a masculine or feminine. And that's kind of the some of the epiphanies and realizations you come into as you ascend or start to spiritually grow. And so, um, anyway, you find out the male, female, doesn't matter so much. So this, in this sense, when we're talking about divine feminine, it's just the characteristic of what that embodies. Doesn't mean that a man is, you know, too in touch with feminine or a woman is getting too in touch or too powerful in one way or the other. It's just defining this as an aspect. And the feminine is creation. Feminine is, you know, so much, as I've mentioned here. And then there's such value also, of course, in the masculine power, divine masculine and all of that. But in this case, because I am focusing on the hibiscus, that is why we are focusing on the divine feminine power at this moment. But again, this is a such a positive attribute for anyone 3D, technically, male or female, to have, okay? Now, we're going to look at angel number 11, because the 11 appears at the bottom of the card. And as usual, as per usual, I recommend people go look at the blog site, Australian blog site, called Angel Numbers, Joanne Sacred Scribes. And she has a ton of uh, positive you know, definitions of the positive aspects of all these numbers. You just go to that site, type in whatever number you're interested in. It can be single digit, triple, quadruple digit, whatever and it will let you know, you know, about that. So in this case, 11 encourages you to assist and inspire the human race via your natural abilities, relying upon your own intuition to guide you. It encourages you to be a guiding light, to bring illumination to others, and help raise spiritual awareness. Trust the angels to support your light work. So that's a beautiful meaning. I'll leave that for you, for you to ponder on as, as much or as little as you want. 
Now, the companion book to this uh, deck, so this, this card is drawn from the Sacred Forest Oracle deck by author Lynn and artist, last name Bridenthal, and I'm sorry if I repeated that. I've, rec I've had to record this, this show a couple of times, so I I'm not sure if I did already say that. But I, yeah, again, was really shocked when Dragon Power popped up to go with this. But I want to just read from the companion book to this deck, um, just a little illustration setting up the scene. So I'm like, yeah, why is this woman laying there and what's going on with the dragon? I was really confused why this card came up in conjunction with the hibiscus and when I asked what messages wanted to come out for all of us today on this show and specifically the show. So I'll just set the scene. It says, you've fallen asleep on the forest floor. The night was cold as you snuggled into some leaves, yet you felt warm and comfortable as you slept. In the early morning, you stretch and open your eyes to find a dragon has lovingly wrapped himself around you in the night. He opens his large eyes and looks at you with kindness and compassion, and you know that all is well. So once I read that little scene set up, you know, a lot of things started to make sense to me. So, and, and again, in conjunction with our hibiscus and divine feminine, it all makes sense. So... This Divine Feminine is resting in the leaves. She's earthing. Her whole body is connected in with Gaia or the earth and the sentient being that is the beautiful, gorgeous, glorious earth itself. And she's got leaves in her dress intertwined also with things that remind you of the Galaxis up here. So she is fully connected into the earth, but also up into the heavens. And the orb in between the dragon and her you know, is that eternal light and spark that we all are, whether you're a dragon or a woman or leaves or trees, you know, or these other planets or moons happening beyond. And the interesting thing is that, you know, this orb is aligned more, her, her left side is sticking up, so it's connected in with the heart space. And then we've got the dragon too, who actually they may have multiple hearts, <laughs> if you really think about it. Um, and we've got this color red tying in with our, you know, our red hibiscus. And I already mentioned the horns are like echoing the number 11, which can even set up a portal to other dimensions, to other, you know, um, levels of, of being and consciousness that we, I don't think as human beings can ever consciously quite comprehend. Um, but anyhow, there's just a beautiful relationship uh, in this scene, you know, he's behind her, not on top of her. He's guarding in a guarding position. The the wings are shielding her, you know, just kind of saying that, you know, even in her sleep state, she is always protected. And when she awakes and stands in her full power, boy, is she in her full power and connected in with the ground in the heavens above. Um, you know, the dragon also is blending in kind of like an earth guardian, but a cross between earth guardian and and galactic uh, guardian because we've got some of the stars and things popping up behind him in the background, you know, in a trans transparent way, translucent way, coming in through the the wings themselves. And the wings kind of become part of like the leaves because, you know, it's reminiscent of um, the veins in a leaf and whatnot. So there's such, you know, there are so many a host of meanings in here, and I invite you to, to you know, lo really look at this on your own and maybe, you know. Uh, take take a take a, a stab at this uh, of reading it on your own too, and see what other layers of um, sentiments you know come up for you with it. Um, that's all I've got for now. But uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to the sky observations portion of the show. All right. So now, um, if you're whether you're new or returning to this channel, thank you so much for being here. I extend my heartfelt thanks uh, to you, and I'm happy that you're here. Now, if you are new to this channel, I highly uh, recommend that you look at some of my previous shows at the intros. I'm deciding not to go ahead and do my usual, you know, kind of um, rundown of what I do here and why I'm doing it. I think you'll catch on pretty quickly uh, as we move through the show. And if not, you know, do look at it. do usually give extensive intros about it on other shows. Uh, so, and if you're returning, you can hang with me now. I'm not going to, to go through the usual uh, intro. All right, so for right now, we are all of these are going to be in Miami, Florida this time around. And I'm just looking up in the skies, and I'm looking to the east uh, toward the evening. Now, um, I've tagged, you know, a few things. I'm not going to be able to get to all of the letters through every slide. Uh, I invite you, as always, on your own time to, you know, look further at that if, if you're interested. So we're going to look at this scene with enhancement. You know, I started noticing something kind of furry, furry, I'm sorry, fuzzy and blurry. <laughs> it came out by mistake as furry. It's not furry. Um, 
but something just strange, you know, had a, a clear direction to it, almost kind of looks arrowhead-like, and it's kind of um, blurry because it's like behind a veil of particulate. And then we have this weird texture and patterning, you know, moving up in a very strange way. So as I always say, these are not natural cloud formations for this tropical to subtropical area of the world. And definitely not at this altitude. So all of this is strange. All of this is feeling extremely artificial, like it's many different types of cloak. So we're going to look at it with enhancement, and bam, we see a whole new world of information. Yes, this was the alternate cover slide I had up there. So I really want to uh, invite you to pay attention to the color signatures, the movement. Is something looking fuzzy and choppy, or is it very clear? Um, you know, there's just so much going on in our skies these days. And as I've said in my very first show, especially since 2018, when I was like in a very supernatural way told to look up. Um, now, I do start to see cloaking and craft individual things happening here just because I've been looking at these things for so long. I'm not sure if you might see some of this stuff in here. Um, but, you know, definitely we have a form that looks very constructive, that it looks very engineered with like a trail coming behind it. There's something very rigid happening here if you follow my cursor, something with looks like engineering here. I want to say this almost looks like a command deck that we're seeing like the front like windshield, if you will, of it. And this would be the top of the deck where something is just flying off of it, a craft. We've got another pure straight line here, which just doesn't happen in natural cloud formations. And anyway, how do you have something zooming off this way, where this is almost dead level, and then you have this weird texture rising up in weird vertical ways. This just would never happen side by side at this range of altitude and also extremely low in the sky. Uh, anyway, you slice it to be a natural cloud system. It's not. Then on top of it, we get all these different color ranges. So we've got indigos, navy, you know, royal blues, raspberries, magentas, going into bright oranges. And, you know, again, this, this is all <laughs> right in the same area. And besides that, we're looking east at the evening. So we shouldn't have any bright reds flaring up there at all. And yet we do. So do look at my description box below to see what could be causing that. I give several theories of what could be going on. You may know of or, you know, come into other knowledge about other reasons. Um, but anyway, I give you a few. In this case, I think it's just being generated locally. So when I see that, to me, that's power. That's something generating that color signature right in there. And that means something is cloaking. Um, then up here at D.1, this gets really odd. We've got this smudge out of purple. But look at this. We have almost like a perfect um, circular indentation, but yet it also has like a, a rim popping out 3D with shadow underneath it. So I got to say, we, we definitely have a cloak and craft in here as well. You know, conveniently and coincidentally, in quotes, right where just this elliptical smudge out of a different color happens to reside. And it's in the same family as, you know, this color signature down here, which I'm calling out as a craft. You be the judge, of course, on any of these that I'm presenting to you. I'm just giving you my insights and my take on it after, you know, over two decades of being heavily entrenched in the design, construction, arts, you know, you name it, fields, technical fields as well. So, uh, but see what you think. All right, now we're going to take a look at this. <laughs> You know, stood out for obvious reasons. It really there weren't there weren't really many other any other clouds around. This was very low in the sky, and it has such a perfect pointed elliptical shape. Again, not typical to this area whatsoever. And with enhancements, it even gets even more interesting. And I will say this: I know a lot of you already know it by now. It's old hat. But when I say enhancement, it simply means I've taken the photo, and all I've done is edited attributes of the photo such as uh, color saturation, brightness, and contrast. And that means all I do is up the levels a little, tweak them up or down a little. And then a whole new world of information pops out from something like that to this. So here we go. We start to see these darker forms within this overall quote-unquote cloud body. So that tells me we're dealing with something that is just in there, cloaking, you know, with this in front of it. We also have something really weird happening at 8.1. It looks like a rigid straight line, which again, you're not going to get that in natural clouds. Also something strange texture and form-wise happening at C.1. And then again, you've got to look at color signatures. 
because we get golden flare-ups where there might be craft. And look at this straight line coming down, and this comes to a point. I mean, there's nothing natural about it. So I think this is a couple of different craft, or a craft that maybe has two other little ones docking to it. Uh, you see what you see. All right, this, I'm not even labeling it. It just felt weird. Um, I was outdoors looking up, and... You know, it just seemed very diffuse, didn't feel like a natural sun, felt very artificial. And with enhancement, we see that we've got a glaring light source, but also something reddish, you know, popping up behind this heavy, heavy particulate. And again, I invite you to look at the description box below to see what that might be. Is it a bigger planet hiding behind an artificial light source, or what else could be going on there? All right, now we're going to look east in the morning. And obviously what uh, caught my attention, the left is going to be the original. And whenever I have a side-by-side, -side, the right is going to be the enhanced version. So on the left-hand side, looking east, you know, we see this giant imprint. You know, the void area is a triangular form. We have other forms doing the same thing. Triangular up here, an elongated triangle. Something starting to happen up here. And then we have such strange cloud forms happening all over the place. So we look to the right at the enhanced version. We see, you know, still see that triangular imprint. You know, we've got red pop-ups of signatures. Um, you know, this C.1 is a triangular form. So I think these might be independent individual little craft where it's bright red. <laughs> sorry, bright red. Sorry for the voice crack. Up at B.1, we also have a fuzz out. It's a little choppy and fuzzy. Look at all the different color ranges. You know, the sun rising is supposed to be down here, by the way. So how are we getting a burst of all different warm tones up in here? with white dead in the middle, black something or other going on over here. It's really, truly bizarre. Then we get a rigid structure down here, something really strange happening at D.1. We're going to zoom in on it in a minute. Um, but all of this to say is we've got unnatural artificial things going on in the skies. In disguise, if you will, harkening back to our... our um, topic of the day name. But anyway, um, when I do uh, capture, when I see some of this stuff, we'll look to the left for a minute. When everything's choppy and fuzzy, even to the naked eye, and as you can see, everything else is in clear focus. Uh, to me, I, I call that um, staccato cloud activity, or just staccato effect. Um, to me, that means there's cloak and craft, uh, maybe several, or just one giant one, or a combination thereof, of craft cloaking up in the skies. And the choppiness is just the side effect of the power source of said craft, or it could be uh, electromagnetic wave activity or other frequencies deliberately sent out to chop up and um, disturb the atmosphere, or a combination of everything, which is what I think is happening. Um, so anyway, I think that's absolutely at play here. So we're going to look, zoomed in, let me go back. We're going to look at this D element. Oh, I'm trying to get my cursor. Uh, like I said, down here below at D, we're going to zoom in there. And actually, um, this is just another picture setting it up to just look at this as the original. Okay, But we can see there's some weird shape here that looks very constructed, uh, almost rectangular with something happening in front of it, making it look like there's a hole there. But um, you know, it's very, very rigid structure looking. So uh, we're going to look in at that rectangle. And here we go. So we see, you know, there's no way that's a, a, you know, natural cloud. We even have, like, white parts popping up out of here with reflection points and something happening here, too, that looks rigid, like scalloped curves. And when uh, we start to see that, then these are machine parts um, popping out. It looks like this might even be some type of connector to a much bigger craft happening here. Why do I say this is a bigger craft? We're going to be zooming in and looking that looking at this as well with a lot of like a brighter, I'm going to brighten it up so we can see what's looming in and hiding behind that. A lot of weird stuff is happening all over the top of this thing as well. We even have a incision, like this looks like an incised outline of a, a pure triangular form, a symmetrical one. Uh, the longer look, you look at this photo, you're going to see all kinds of very interesting stuff. And as I always say, keep in mind the color signatures as well, in addition to the different movement that's going on in different scenes. Now we're zooming in yet again. So if you're looking at this on a laptop screen, laptop screen, it might be a little bit mappy and, and, and fuzzy to read. So you might want to squint your eyes to get a better view. Or as I always recommend, if you have the luxury of having a bigger screen, like a laptop screen, and also a smaller handheld device, you know, hold them in, one in front of the other as you watch the show. Toggle your view up and down between the two formats. And you're going to see a lot of very different things uh, pop out at you 
from one scale to the other. So when I narrate these shows, I'm only doing it on the bigger format. If I have the smaller one in front of me at the same time, I'd really be picking out a lot more in each you know, frame. So, but it is what it is. I'm only using the laptop. So that's why I invite you to also see what you can see. Um, but anyway, we've got a lot of different stuff going on in here. But for right now, I'm going to say that this dark black thing is all one big chunk, if you follow my cursor. And I think there's just a lot of different levels and layers of camouflage happening, like floating in front of it. And that's this is probably even in front of this thing. But again, we still get this like pure bright white stuff popping out. To me, that's machine parts. Uh, see what you think, though. Hang on one second. Okay, I'm back. So this is what I said for the bigger overall cloud. This gets really interesting with some more brightness. Look at little lowercase aa. We got a triangle, uh, triangular form on angle, right? Popping out here a little bit. This gets seg segmented in a different way. We got a straight line here going back up here, very triangular, or maybe that's like a, a diamond shape or a rectangle on angle. Got something weird flying off the top of a peak pointing up this way. And then look at this thing at lower KCC. It's like a half sphere or like a, pa a reverse Pac-Man with a jaw open for anybody of the 80s. Um, and look at this. What is she, what is coming in or out of this thing? It's it's just really bizarre. Look at these like sticks. Actually, the bottom one looks like it's attached to this thing. And then this stuff looks like it could be coming or going out of this quote unquote machine, you know, technical mouth. Uh, anyway, we have a slightly different color signature back up here on the triangle, you know, versus the more brown and taupe color signature happening down here. So that implies these are two different, you know, constructs that this is probably just piggybacking on top or something like a, I often say like a moray to a shark in some of my other shows. This is not uncommon to see something maybe docked on top or just riding along. Uh, maybe it's even something more biological. We've seen in other shows some stuff that looks almost aquatic or marine-like. So it's hard to tell. Is that a, a living bioorganism or is it a craft look, you know, made to look like one? We get into stuff like that. So like, could this be like the head of a squid and the tentacles you know, coming back and it's riding along? Um, in this case, I do think it's just more of a, a machine-like you know, fabrication. But see what you think. Now we're going to look, still looking east, we're going to expand out the view, just because things started, look, started looking extra weird, you know, with these like lines, you know, radiating out, that just again, nothing could cause that without having some type of technology up there. Also look at the alarmingly artificial solar simulator happening down here. Our natural sun would never be this huge in any frame of any photo, nor this white, and so I echo and reinforce my earlier findings also on the, you know, built upon by the shoulders of others, bringing this to my awareness. Thank God. Uh, look at all the other Earth and Sky Watching channels out there on YouTube. People like you or myself going out, making direct observations, capturing things on camera, and noticing patterns uh, to determine that we are dealing with uh, an artificial sun, a solar simulator, and effects of it. Um, as I always say, look at the channel, fi The Final Days. Uh, she absolutely nails that of what's going on with the tech up in the sky there. Also, other channels like Jeff P. and Naughty Beaver and the Nostradamus Prophecies, when you especially look at the year 2018, uh, they were really covering all of their findings on this and how things could be working with it. And uh, it's well worth you know checking that out. And on top of that, as I always say, there are patents pulled in the early 1960s. I cover one on one of my earliest shows. And uh, it shows, you know, patents are pulled for it. So uh, when you see that, you know it's been employed. And I've really noticed this kicking into high gear uh, since around 2014, around that benchmark. I think our, our sun was completely hijacked, and a lot of us just don't even notice because we're so busy in our day-to-day, -day, and it really kind of steps about beyond reason that that could even be possible. But the more you look into it, the more you see it's not only possible, but it's happened. All right, so here we're going to look at the enhanced version of it. Just so you know, again, we have that glaring, other glaring example in a negative, uh, opposite way of the imprint, the dark imprint, in contrast to this abomination here. Um, anyway, we've got the reddish signatures, and here we start to see C.1, a triangular form. You know, I still didn't pick out too much more of what's going on, but this is one of those scenes that I think if you look at this 
on a smaller handheld device, you're going to see a lot more. And here, you know, this looks like a craft emerging out of some type of portal or dark hole or uh, opening or rip into whatever fabric this is. So, again, now is the time to start thinking more, um, more dimensionally and less, you know, 2D with our vision of what we're seeing. It's a great idea to start looking, you know, into like have a, a four, fourth dimensional view on some of this stuff to better get at what is going on in our world these days. All right, so now this is looking to the north, and look at this. Look at these jagged lines. You know, it's it's carved out like that. Just does not happen in the natural sky. We also have this movement coming down. This overall staccato cloud effect. Um, it just everything about this scene screams unnatural and artificial cloud and cloaking material. And when I say cloaking material, I'm talking also about plasma something that's denser and thicker than just regular cloud vapor material that can linger and kind of, you know, change form and shape and cling to objects and camouflage things in a really fantastic way. So here with enhancement, we get golden tones over here. And again, this is looking to the north in the morning. Well, then this goes to pure white and even greenish and some pink, reddish pink faintly starts to emerge here. So I think we're dealing with multiple craft. Look at this, we've got a straight line coming down on angle, sharp angle. This overall scene is kind of radiating and splaying out this way while other things are coming in at different angles. Look at the texture happening up here. It's not a pine cone effect, but it reminds me a little bit of that in an elliptical shape. Um, just so much happening. This fuzz out could be something more like a bell-shaped bottom, a triangular form. Um, see what you find in here. I, I just find it really pretty wild and not at all natural for our skies in this area of the world. Now we're just zooming in on that thing with those very distinct points. Look at this. That just in no way, shape, or form happens in natural cloud formations. A lot of strange little things happening in here too when we look at the patterns. Uh, we'll look at it. Um, nope, I thought we were going to look at it one more time or not. Okay, now we're looking north-northwest and out of this scene, like to the left of where we were, or looking more to the, the west, we start to see this pure triangular, again, an imprint pop up with some definite texture. These are like bulges coming out, like little, you know, domes or little bullet type things coming out. And then up here we start to see a very straight edge, you know, of a triangle, again, symmetrical. So we're going to look at it with enhancement. It becomes much more apparent what's going on. We have definitely some type of imprint or cloaking craft itself in this black territory with some like cloaking material flying in front of it, maybe another object in front of it, a triangular one. You know, we see that again, this clear cutout, very rigid line, very sharp, that does not happen in nature. So we've got something kind of object there, imprint of one happening. See what you see in that scene. All right, now we're gonna look to the east in the morning and these just seem to be like companion craft to me and cloak because they have the same type of character. They're really low in the sky and then everything else kind of all hell breaks loose and things are doing its own thing all around it. So I think we have like a pod or a group of, of craft moving through is what I see. In the back we've got that glaring artificial sun happening as well. With enhancement we can see there's quite a lot of a different activity happening. So we get this yellow gold appearing but we also have reds and pinks you know and on top of this supposed sun source which just stays fixed. Now it looks like we even have a warping of, of something happening here. We have a fuzzy triangular form, symmetrical happening right in the middle there. So we're going to look again with a little more enhancement, exaggerated, just to kind of try to pull out what the heck is going on. At 8.2, you can maybe see why I'm calling this craft and camouflage and disguise because it's got a clear shape and form to it. And then this is the giveaway. These two prongs, what I'm assuming is the back of this thing. Look at the, they're equal and they are like a, you know, mirrored, they splay out, you know, evenly and no natural cloud, you know, would do that. And that, like they're two sticks or prongs. And then B.2, if we accept this as some type of craft, then so is B.2. We've got a point and we've got, you know, again, like a pointed ellipse. It looks very structured and rigid and, and like it's designed. Then we look up at F.2, we've got something strange happening up here. And again, we already touched on C.2, but we start to see more detail in here. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but again, none of this says natural cloud assembly. Let's see what you can find and what you think about it. Now I'm zooming back out now to catch a little more of the overall scene. 
which will help inform you maybe of what I was seeing and feeling in this scene. Because again, it's not only going by your visual eyes of what you're seeing, but mainly on the feel. We've got to really feel these things out lately. We're going to start seeing a lot of strange and extraordinary stuff. People already are. Um, it's coming to you know be more and more um, on the rise because our actual planet is ascending from a 3D to a 5D consciousness. That means we're going to pass through the 4D astral. That means the entire planet is probably off-roading it right now in the galaxy and nobody's telling us. Um, and that means that that veil, they say the veil is thinning, that we're going to start to see things into the 4D astral plane, which does contain things like ghosts and demons and angelic forms, just things that we're not used to seeing consistently. We might start seeing consistently. And so this scene is kind of a good little heads up on that because we've got, you know, these aren't even typical clouds. They're artificial clouds cloaking stuff. And then look at this thing coming in at the upper right hand corner. What the heck is that? That's no natural cloud form that looks like all cloak over something and it's coming down in on angle while everything else is, you know, just kind of coming across and this thing in the back is doing something strange. So anyway, um, I'm just giving you a heads up that we're starting to st deal with some things we're not used to maybe and I believe all of this is kind of a soft disclosure if you will although it's pretty in your face once you start to know what to look for and that's what I'm trying to do here on this channel is try to um, help people start to look the, at the patterns start to open up your mind that this stuff is happening um, but anyway at H we start to see actual points these look very machined and um, you know kind of tooled to me so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this with enhancement maybe you can see it now at H.1 this looks like, you know, we've got a groove cut through here and that these are machine parts or, or materials happening right in there at H.1. Um, anyway, we have like, you know, again, different color signature and movement happening back here, which just does not fit at all. Like, you can't tell me that A.1 is in any same family of quote unquote cloud as everything else going on. Like each thing has its own character. It's just truly bizarre. Uh, so see what you see in this scene. You know, we now see it C.1. This is absolutely more of an overall um, triangular form. Uh, but what the heck is going on A.1? I'm so stumped by this. I, I, I know it's cloaking on some kind of craft. I just would love, as I always say, to see these things without the cloak. All right. We're going to zoom in on the H.2 really a little bit more. I was trying to get at what these parts and pieces are, but it, you know, I really couldn't. But I do get at, look at the red signature on this. Well, everything around it is something else. So that tells me there's absolutely some different, you know, uh, energy source happening right in there. We also get a different look at what's going on with that rectangle, um, sorry, that triangular form. We even have like a ball kind of like hanging on to whatever this is. Uh, we see it broken down, all these little pieces a little bit more. Um, but again, I'm going to just leave this uh, to you to enjoy and, and see what you can find on your own. Okay, now we're looking north in the morning, and look at this, A, this white form. When we put enhancement on it, we're going to get a much better picture of what's going on. Weird patterning happening at B. What the heck is C? It comes to a point. It's symmetrical. It actually has like a kite shape. Really bizarre. How do we have movement going up like this while well, this is coming across? with this uh, specific geometrical shape. Again, just doesn't happen in natural cloud systems. So here we go. Again, pay attention to the color signatures changing. Um, and look at A.1, that's a standalone craft, you know, like, and that's like a vapor trail, this thing zooming out. If you follow the line of the movement, it's absolutely zooming out. It looks like some other little cloaking craft is right behind it. Looks like they're actually coming out of this opening somehow. So this has to be a standalone craft too. Um, look at this weird dark shape. It looks very symmetrical, tucked in there down at C.1. What the heck is going on with this overall scene? Then we throw B.1 into the mix. It's got a very clear like division point between two holes that look symmetrical, very blocky shape. And then down here we get weird textures and things happening that look like they have design to them. Are we looking at the top like of a bow of a craft? Um, you know, again, I'm presenting a lot of questions for you to take a closer look and see what you can find and see what conclusions you come up with. Uh, now we're looking east-southeast toward the afternoon, toward 4 p.m. And this just struck me as odd, not only the staccato effect and this obvious imprint of something, but when I see this streak coming across, uh, we'll go to the right now in the enhanced version, that's a chemtrail of some type. 
that means that somebody or something is creating these to kind of distract you or create more stuff, artificial stuff in the sky to further camouflage human beings' perception of finding, you know, what we're looking at here. Now at B.1, I start to see a triangle hidden, you know, behind this streak and it has its own texture and has a very clear point to it. Now is that a standalone triangular form or is that just like the tip of something much bigger? You know, hard to say because whatever is doing one heck of a great job of camouflaging stuff in the sky with all of this. All right, we're just zooming in on that trail. You know, it even has like perfect round things happening in here. The whole thing is just bizarre. See if you see anything in there that uh, gives you an aha moment or not. Okay, then we're going to look. We've got the streak still coming down. We're, we're looking actually toward the north of where we just were, uh, more toward the north northeast direction. And again, look how choppy and fuzzy this is. That's not any normal cloud texture, you know, from the old books, you know, as far as uh, decades in the past. I've been on this planet many, many decades, and we've never seen stuff like this until recently. And then look at this. We've got a pure curve. It's like the bottom of a bowl, you know, happening up in here. So I am going to try to, you know, look at it with enhancement, but it's so darn choppy. It's really hard to read much out of here at all, but you do see this trail. You do see that we've got uh, mysteriously, you know, red signatures, you know, pink happening back in here. Again, to me that says there's some kind of craft operating or some machine generating something right there. And something else is happening here with more gold signatures. I couldn't get at what the heck is going on with that pure curve, but you see the bottom of it. So see what you think is going on. Are we dealing with one massive structure that's just being hidden by all this choppy stuff and red herrings, you know, floating through there? Or are we dealing with multiple, multiple craft? Uh, see what you think. All right, I still was going to look in here one more time because we just see a sharp edge here, you know, and here as well. And I don't think I get it too much more, but it's just another way of looking at this whole thing. Uh, I enhanced it in a way that we don't get lost in some of the red uh, signatures. I took that color, those colors out just to try to focus more on form and shape of some of these things and to see if you see anything different. What is weird is like D.1, what's this thing? It's like a perfect little sphere or elliptical form. Another thing down here at E.1 looks like almost like a, a scope or a radar dish or something popping up attached to, oops, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to jump, you know, some type of craft happening down here. So then when we zoom in on that, you know, here we go. Look, that looks like a perfect machine part that's attached to metal. You know, we even see the metal part like poking out here at the tip. So I'm going to say we are absolutely having artificial like cloaking material over, you know, a straight up 3D craft, you know. And then D.2 now, instead of just looking like a standalone ball, I think that we're too looking at, you know, part of a ship or something that's got massive cloak in front of it. Uh, but see what you think. Like to me, though, E.2 is a smoking gun that we have machine parts because we have something moving horizontal and straight, as straight as straight can be. And then we have this, which looks like a, like a conical form pointing out at us, a, you know, pure circular form. So to me, yes, that's absolutely craft. And the more you look, you're going to see little parts and pieces poking out here, too. This is absolutely a companion craft floating right behind it, doing the same thing. And then even here, you got a straight, straight line with, you know, big triangles. So you know, we're talking craft. All right, now uh, this one gets really interesting. On the left-hand side here, the original looking north at 4 p.m., you know, there's a straight line coming across, so that caught my attention. Now when we see it with enhancement, we see why. You know, look at this. We've got like a walnut-shaped craft or something here and something else so heavily veiled, and you see the little parts peek up, you know, um, peek up out of here when they're not, you know, covered in cloaking material. So, and also the angle is very telling, just something isn't right, you know, with this overall scene, meaning that there's artificial tech or craft of some kind, objects, you know, happening in our skies that are being camouflaged and veiled by cloaking material in all kinds of ways, uh, heavy particulate veiling and all of this stuff. But look at our little, I'll call it an affectionately, our walnut here, walnut shape, and we even have like three distinct, um, like lights or divisions, you know, um, or objects sitting on this thing. You know, they're equidistant spacing, so that tells me that's engineered, that has intelligent design behind it. And again, we have this thing that looks like it's being swathed in um, cloaking material, and it has movement to it. So see what you think's going on. I'm calling it as cloaking craft. You know my opinion by now. All right, now we're going to look southwest. 
toward the evening. And again, this is a supposed sunset, but look how white and glaring. Actually, this one I was driving and I really almost couldn't even see. And it was that intense and that big. And again, that does not, that's not a function of our original uh, sun. Then on top of it, I started noticing weird objects, but mainly this in front, this triangle at E got my attention. But until I uh, started doing the enhancements, I realized, no, the real action is happening much higher up. And so with the first level of enhancement, I see our objects starting to emerge at C.1, like an object on top of an object type of thing. And then look at D.1, we've got this overall bigger shape happening, the straighter line, and then all the different color signatures start to become very apparent. Then we zoom in a little more, and again, E.2 is where that triangular shape was happening, that backlit shape that I was focused on, but really the key stuff to watch was up here. So look at this. We've got these, um, this kind of curve with these prongs. It's very symmetrical. So this is absolutely a craft. You know, intelligent design is employed here. And then we have something weird happening in between. And look at this flash of green. I haven't seen that. Actually, it's the first time I've seen that where I zoom in on something and part of it has a flash of one color and then parts other colors. Then on this, we'll just call it the tail end. I don't know if it's the back or the front, but we have something coming to a point and this also looks like a, it has metal, you know, features to it. So see what you think is going on. We have a, a straight line happening back here. Again, there's heavy, heavy particulate. This artificial sun stuff, backlighting this stuff. Uh, see what you see. Now I, you know, switch the, the contrast up. It's very reddish looking just so I could get at what's going on with these triangular forms. And also what's going on here at lowercase ee -E and ff. See how dark these are? And look at, we have a right angle, okay? We have a sharp line here, a sharp edge at an angle, you know, pure angle and forms. That doesn't happen with natural clouds. So we're looking at tech of some kind. I call it craft. It could be other, some types of objects or technology. I'm going with craft for now until I get more evidence. But now we're gonna look east and, uh, you know, so opposite of what we were, uh, where we were just looking, <laughs> sorry, we were looking west, now we're looking east in a similar area. And uh, I was in a parking lot somewhere. So here I see a very strange form down here, you know, very weird activity happening all in the center of this photo. And over here, look, at we have like these two prongs. And actually, ironically, these two curved prongs look like the horns of the dragon in one of the original photos. And look, at we have a pure triangular form peeking up out of here. So, you know, what the heck? Again, that's not natural clouds. Got something really weird happening at G as well. So then we look uh, to the right, and we I've enhanced it one way. So actually, ironically, not ironically, but funnily enough, the cover photo is going to be enhancement of this portion of the photo. So my first enhancement levels on it were looking just at the bottom. I'm lightening it away that we can get at what's going on with the bottom of the photo. And then the top uh, has a different level of lighting and all that, so we'll get to enhancing the top of that to see what's going on. But for right now, we'll focus on the bottom half. And look at this thing at B.1. What the heck is that? That's not a tornado, oh, nothing like that. So it's just some very bizarre shape. Again, hint, hint, it's got to be cloak and craft. And again, you don't have anything coming down to a point like a cone or a wedge, and then have something coming dead level out of it, horizontal. And then this is horizontal, it's doing something strange. Looks like that we have two holes here, perfect holes. So all of this screams unnatural, uh, not, not clouds for sure. So now we're looking at the upper portion here and this part is where I took the cover from. So look what the heck is going on at G.2. It's got a, a intelligent sensibility to it because we've got a triangular form predominant. Weird stuff happening all in it though. And look how that's blue and green, and it's side by side next to this, and yet this is like igniting red, orange, and yellow all over the place. And then we got this dark, dark form. Oddly enough, too, at H.2, look at this. This looks like a disc on its side with a hole in it. Um, anyway, all of this is just so bizarre. See what you see in this scene. We're going to zoom in one more time so you can see what I'm, I'm seeing as a, a disc on its side. Different material because it's a different color. Still have no idea what this dark, dark form is doing. By all of this, you can see all this particulate. It's just, you know, heavy, heavy in the air to veil stuff. Oh, get rid of this little H.1. I forgot to delete that when I was copy-pasting letters. 
But anyway, um, you know, look at this texture. You know, this is pretty wild. I have zero answers on what's going on, but there's no way that we could have, I mean, it's beautiful color-wise, color palette. We got green, blue, yellow, orange, red, you know, browns, and then white. <laughs> and it's all right next to each other. So what's causing that? And we're looking east, you know, towards sunset. It makes no sense. Now we're going to go back and look west and just looking at the patterns in the sky and again, relying on my feeling, and I've stopped using this, the term sixth sense. I realized my eyes were open that that is BS. That is our first sense. Our intuition and our feeling into things is our first sense. We've got to ditch the sixth sense crap. Again, my belief is that's used by negative entities programming humankind to get their stupid negative aspect of the number six in numerology in there. Now, there's a very positive aspect of six in numerology. And again, I invite you to look back at that Angel Numbers Joanne Sacred Scribes uh, site because then she covers that. And I am here to reclaim all sixes for positive use. No more we've been programmed to believe in six, six, sixes as being negative. No, they can also be used for extremely good, powerful, you know, things. And that's what I am claiming. No more am I going to be buzz, you know, like buzz trip to think of it only as negative. No, 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 no. It's positive as well. All right enough of that speech. Um, but now we'll look at this with enhancement. Now what's interesting here is uh, when you consider the other YouTube channel, uh, The Final Days, and again, I don't subscribe to, oh, this is the end of the world, it's all over. I think we're just going into a shift of days to a better, you know, new, a newer than a better, much better way, harmonious way. Um, but anyway, I do recommend still going over there for the actual evidence of, of what's going on in the skies. But I think I might also be having glimpsing the, the bottom of the camouflage over kind of the uh, planetary object that she's been catching, or at least effects of it, you know, to turn the sky this color, you know, red, pink, and, and the enhancements. But anyway, it also could be just some kind of craft. Because look at, we've got these like skinny, you know, cylindrical almost like, or rectilinear forms. Uh, on the edge of something very, you know, straight and angular. It almost looks like the snout of one of those needle nose fish, if you're familiar with fishing and fish in the ocean. Um, and then we also have something, a very straight line here. It looks like, you know, constructed. So we definitely have craft involved here. And I don't know if that's all in the way to camouflage whatever's going on in the back, or if this is just some type of massive craft with stuff floating in front of it. Or this, this thing actually looks like an object, if you follow my cursor, going this way. So how would you have like a something, you know, a body on a sharp angle this way while another one's coming this way without having artificial tech of some kind in the skies? My answer is no, you can't. It's not natural cloud, no matter what. Now we're going to look to the southwest. We were just looking straight west. And this thing was just so weird at sea. Again, we're seeing, we're seeing parallel lines in the sky. And again, that's not in a natural cloud. And we're seeing cross lines, too, in patterns. We're seeing the staccato cloud effect, all kinds of things. This, by the way, these rays are just a, uh, a lamp light. That's, that's not any other light source. So we're not really going to worry about that right now. It's artificial lamp, street lamp. So, but look at this, A.1. We've got like these incision marks. They're so precise, almost crisscrossing. You know, that's intelligent design. And then we have all these different color signatures all right next to each other. You know, and look at the blues, the greens, yellows. None of this makes sense to be in, you know, the southwest sky toward the evening. And again, with this red-pink signature, are we glimpsing the bottom of a bigger planetary body? Or what is causing this? Is it some kind of craft set, setting up shop here local, you know, to create that color? See what you think. All right, now we're going to take up this other piece, which has looked really strange, too. Look, we have concentric arcs, um, you know, all over each other, very precise. And that doesn't look like natural cloud. And we look at it with some enhancement. And look at, we've got an edge poking up out of here. You know, it looks perfectly constructed. A dome-like thing happening here. I think this is a bigger looming craft beyond where it's a little more shadowy. Um, and then this is a different craft that may be like floating along in front of it in the foreground. But look at this. Look how precise all of this is. Too precise just to be haphazard cloud no matter what. It has intelligent design. When you add on top of it that we have these bright, bright white points where the background is all monochromatic, that tells me there's absolutely machine parts or something poking up out of this thing. See what you think. All right, this is now looking to the south. We, we already took a look at the west, southwest, and the east. Now we're going to turn our attention south because look at these patterns. And again, I can see this on the left-hand side to the naked eye, right? But bam, when we look to the right, it's so much more telling. We can just see things so much clearer with 
the amazing, you know, photo and light sensitivity on these camera phones. I'm just using an old Android and it's picking this stuff up. So here I want you to see how clear, straight this edge is at the bottom of this thing. It's an overall perfect symmetrical triangle. And then how can you possibly have that? That's strange enough in and of itself at f.1. But how the heck can you have these arcs and curves and weird shapes flying up out of this thing? You know, it's absolutely no natural cloud system. So we've got craft activity. Once again, I would love to see all of this without the smoke and mirrors employed, so to speak. And, you know, I think, again, I say that this is soft disclosure for us to start to getting used to all of this in cloud form because one day something might be revealed and we're, you know, supposed to look at it and not be afraid. And uh, like I say, too, this is an era, a new age of um, we're walking into of going by feel on things. The eyes, the physical eyes can be easily deceived. Uh, there's a lot of tech and things, projectors, things up in the sky that can make things look a certain way. I mean, there's even 7D technology out there where um, uh, they, there's uh, actually probably still clips on YouTube where there's like this dragon moving around this like um, space and it even looks like it's coming down on top of you and it's very hard to distinguish what is real and what is not. And so get, keeping that in mind, anything can be faked up in the sky right now. Technology is absolutely there if you look at the solar simulator and even the moon is being simulated. Um, so uh, that being said, um, anything else can be simulated. So there could be some false flag event in the future where even UFOs is being made to look like, you know, something negative or hostile is there. I'm here to say that it's, that's probably all smoke and mirrors and not true. So if you ever do find that you, you sing a UFO, more and more people are seeing them all over the planet, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, if you ever see one yourself, um, don't freak out, you know, and, and when I say UFO, it can look like, like a big star coming in real close to you. It doesn't have to look like the traditional, you know, saucer shape that we've been, pie pan shape we've been programmed to, to only look at. They come in many different forms, but you will know if it's friendly or not by the feeling that you have when you see it. So if you feel it, it does not feel good, it feels ominous or dangerous when you can just take a moment and breathe in and feel into your own heart space then yes, avert it and get away from it. But if you look at it and it fills you with joy or wonder, then you know that you're dealing with something friendly, <laughs> you know, and to, to no longer fear these things. And um, no fear, you know, overall. And I think that's what we're going to come into also, a new phase, a new era of learning these things and trusting our own intuition, trusting our own feelings. All right, so now we're going to look to the, um, I'm sorry, this is not southwest, this is north. Uh, I didn't update the little title thing. So now we're going to look north, and what I see there, again, in the same parking lot is, you know, again, we've got something moving horizontal, but then something going up an angle. So that catches my attention right away, uh, on top of that these aren't even natural strands of cloud or anything, nothing would ever look like that in a natural sky. Now also I start to see a big looming overall dark, dark, um, something or other in the background here with heavy, heavy veiling in particulate. So once again, are we looking at a planet that's being heavily veiled and we're being distracted like with red herrings of all this other crazy cloud activity below? I think so. I think, you know, we're, we're being led to look at all this other crazy patterning and missing the bigger picture, so to speak. It's just my personal opinion. So when we look at this with enhancement, again, ignore this light burst. That's just like street lights or lights on a building. But look at this dark, dark pitch darkness and the shape that it's taking on. I, I really do believe that all of this is to kind of camouflage what's going on with there's some bigger object right there sitting right there in our sky, meaning some type of planetary body or something. But anyway, we've got this burst of reddish, you know, magenta pinks once again happening over in the front. This I, it might even be a mini sphere down here the more I look at it. So what the heck is going on? I can't tell you for sure, but I can point out to you what doesn't seem right and why. And this is another classic example. And what is exactly going on with these little bits? You know, these look like independent little objects. Now when I say objects, it can be a craft, it's either piloted or remote piloted. It could also be sensors or some kind of, you know, instrumentation doing something with the atmosphere or cloud, uh, what do you call it, artificial cloud makers uh, with little jets on them dispersing this stuff, who knows. Um, anyway, just be mindful, a lot of this stuff can be going on. Okay, now uh, we're looking north-northwest um, toward the evening. 
and this just looks strange. So we kind of have this like a V-shape thing. Again, weird that this is going off on one angle and this is at a totally different angle in the sky. Very obvious something strange is up a foot. Uh, well, in this case, in the sky. So here I'm just, you know, taking all color out of it to try to, tr you know, retrain our brain to look at things in a new way, maybe see if other things pop out instead of seeing traditional blue and white. And look at, we start to see little, you know, that looks like little objects and different things. Like how, how do we have something on angle here and this is going straight up while this is going here, all right next to each other. In a sky where there was literally no wind movement, and especially at this altitude, so low in the sky. So this is artificial somethings or others. Uh, see what you think they are. All right, now uh, looking east again, it was just too odd not to, you know, take a photo of and bring it to your attention too. We've got a straight line on angle, triangular forms, you know, one perched on top of here. And then this was really strange because we're looking east toward the evening, and this is again extremely low in the sky. And yet only this had a different color. So that made absolutely no sense. So we look at it with enhancement and look at that thing. It's like on fire on its own. This is not catching like, um, you know, a setting sun, you know, in a diametrically opposed area. This thing is just independently lighting up like that. And so anyway, when we zoom in, you know, obviously to the naked eye, it didn't look this intense. But with enhancement, we see what's really going on. Now, uh, to reinforce my point that this is artificial and being generated local, is look at this, we have white stuff kind of rising up out of here, pure white. And then look at this, this is a, a straight line, this is an absolute square or rectangle right there. You don't have a pure form like that in a natural cloud, ever. Um, and then we've got a triangular form here, at lowercase aa, you know, you see that overall bigger triangle here. So this is also some other kind of craft. Lowercase bb is also a triangular form, something really weird happening between these two. Uh, so see what you see. All right, then we're looking at something pretty amazing in the West. Um, this is one of those cases where I looked out the window and I saw the color on the overall landscape had a very funny glow. And on top of that, I just felt it. All right, we have a magic moment happening of something is moving over, you know, in the sky. So I went outside and looking West, sure enough, when you see another a glow like this, that's otherworldly. It's extremely low in the atmosphere. You can see the top of the tree. And that's not the sun, that's not the sunset. This is independent light source. And again, I felt it. You just feel it strongly. And not just me. If there were neighbors out there, they would have felt it too. Because they have on other occasions when I brought this to their attention. And so now uh, we look at the right-hand side of the enhancement. You can even just tell the character of that is something special. That's not just a typical sky. And why, oh why, is right there that ball of beautiful light, illumination, uh, luminous quality here while everything else around it is pitch black on the enhancement. So we know this is an artificial something or other. Then in the background, we get these interesting pure shapes in, in the blue range, you know, blue-white, ethereal blue-white. And look at the shape of this and just the way, look at the edges. They just have a, uh, not a disintegration, but they're just not, you know, they just have an artificial look like to it So and feel. So now we're going to look at it. Um, this is a panorama looking north to the right toward the southeast to the left. It's not a perfect pure panorama. It's going to be a little warped and distorted uh, just based on what my camera can do, but you get the gist. It's close. So we get this bright intense point here. We get this yellow white with red orange around it, little separate object floating around in here. But look to the left. Then it's like a magenta plum color range with some object floating in front of it. You know, so obviously, and then look how this thing even is formed. It's like coming up and morphing in weird ways. That's not a natural cloud form. And here's the original, obviously, below. Then we're going to look at it again as it started to change. And it moved the whole thing here. This whole assembly moved together just very quietly <laughs> across the sky. And I looked up and I'm like, I know you're there, whoever you are. Um, because on the same time, um, there's a cyan white kind of very indescribable, you know, ethereal, uh, you know, hard to really explain, a light that starts illuminating at the top of all of this. And that's how you know it's a very otherworldly light. That's how you know that something, uh, some of, something of intelligence, not of this world, is up in there, you know, moving across. And because, again, you can also feel it. It's pretty extraordinary. Um, anyway, just looking at this again, you know, see what else you can see in this scene. Okay. And then here it is just really, you know, bleaching it out, blasting it with uh, brightness to see if we can pick up anything else out of here. 
Now what's very interesting is look at this. That whole assembly reduces down to gold here, you know, black here and reddish right in the middle somewhere while everything else is kind of white and then we get the blues. Now look up here at C.2. I see one, two, three pipes parallel to each other and we're looking at the circles, the ends of them. So that tells me there is absolutely a bigger craft in there. I don't know what the pipes do, but those are absolutely, absolutely, no question about it, intelligent design. Okay, now we're going to look to the southwest. And this is really odd. Look at the movement vertical. I'm not going to spend time on the original. We'll jump to the right. Look at this. We've got two white points bulging out, again, on the sea of something monochromatic in color that tells me there's an object, crafted object in there, intelligent design. What the heck is A.1? Why do we just have this isolated reddish glow? And then look down at D.1. This has some intelligent design to it, straight edges. Looks very metallic, popping up out of here. So look how low this is in the sky. It's just not natural and to go up vertical. And then we have sharp edges here. Look at this, right angle, right angle on this thing. Sharp, you know, straight, straight edges that are non-cloud-like. Uh, looking at D.2 as trying to get better at what's going on, I really don't, but I know that's artificial. No way is that anything natural in the sky. All right, then we're going to look at west. Once again, just kind of looking again, can we get at any better what's going on with this enigma here? I don't really see if you see what you see. I see like a, a craft shape in here. All right, then um, another angle as this overall thing is just gliding by um, very slowly. We look at B and I start to see two distinct shapes. You know, it's a very strange cutout right here happening, very kind of uh, symmetrical looking. And then we have a pure triangular form at A. So we look to the right and there we see that perfect triangle. Um, and then at B.1, we've got nice backlighting on whatever these objects are nestled next to each other, parallel at a sharp angle. And also the color signatures are very telling of what's going on, that we have warm tones and then dark right here. Why? <laughs> uh, this even looks like an elliptical shape or egg-like shape, you know, hiding back in here behind this triangular form. And look at this. This is like a straight bar connecting this to something else down here. And then look at these shapes all like nested together. What the heck? And then we get this golden glow right at the center. So please tell me what we're seeing. I know it's artificial. I know it's some type of um, off-world intelligence, but I don't know what it's doing. And here we have like a straight line here, like a stick, um, you know, where we have this triangle separating neatly from something else. Anyway, see what you find in that scene. Now we're coming up on the close of the show. I know it's been a long one, but on the left-hand side, I just see this weird arc, but really what jumped out at me was this pure triangular form with enhancement. Here we go. We see it at B.1, and there's a triangular form also with different cloaking type and um, amounts on it at A.1. Once again, we're looking at the color signature, how it really jumps out, and this is looking at south at 6 p.m., we zoom in a little bit more, and again, we clearly see the B.2, A.2 situation, where these are just triangular forms kind of stuck on to other parts and pieces. So I'm going to say that this is some big cloak and craft, and these things are just kind of docked onto the side and perched on it. All right, here we also have a classic fish shape. You know, this is the front of the fish, and this is the tail. This thing was standalone in the sky, you know. Uh, you can't miss it if you're looking in that direction. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So I'm not going to go into too much more, but is that not a fish? I mean, <laughs> you know, that would be the mouth and the eye. Uh, see what you see there, though. Okay, now we're looking to the northwest. And hold on, sorry, one second, got to clear my voice. Okay, I'm back. So we got weird movement again. You know I watch for movement and shapes and patterns and uh, nothing about this says it's natural. Sharp, you know, edge here looks like we're seeing the imprint, a corner of a triangular form, an imprint here, you know, triangular point there. It's enough to, you know, look at it with enhancement. So this just gets really weird looking, you know. Uh, I don't really have too many more answers here, but again, follow my my little, you know, guidelines that I present earlier in the show, apply them here and see what you can find or see what you see is happening. 
All right, well, this is the photo of the day and the close of the show. So I want to say thanks for looking up at some things here a while with me. Again, I appreciate your being here, and I wish you a gorgeous week ahead, even more importantly, a gorgeous right now. Tremendous peace and love. Lavender Sky Panther. Bye.